to Stability Wad. We spent a few days now talking about abdominal tension, pelvic floor, how to scale that from lighter weight functional movements to very heavy functional movements. We're going to come full circle today to my viewer's original question, which is how do you breathe when you're doing cardiovascular type exercise? The challenge I see in my clinic very often, whether it's CrossFitters, runners, or cyclists, is that there's this tendency to shallow breathe, to breathe up in the neck. We have ribs that start as high as our first rib, right here where my fingers are, and continue all the way down to our 12th rib really low. We have lungs that fill that whole entire chamber, and sometimes it becomes unconscious, but we breathe really shallow, especially when the, the uh, effort gets hard. We start to breathe up into our neck, and that starts to become our normal pattern. It doesn't mean we're not also breathing with our diaphragm, where the diaphragm is moving air up and down, but a lot of our breathing comes up into here. We get very tense in our neck, we start to have numbness tingling in our arms at the extreme, and we start to lose function, lose power in our arms and hands. Ideally, when we're exercising, we're getting most of our breathing through our diaphragm. As we take a breath in, the lungs fill, the diaphragm moves down. As we exhale, the diaphragm contracts, moves up, and it forces that air out of our lungs. We save the scalene breathing, the neck breathing, for when the effort gets really high, and only when it gets really high as an accessory to our diaphragm doing work. Some of the best athletes in the world, cyclists are a good example of this, when you see them from the side on their bike and they've taken a full in-breath, they're twice as thick. These lean cyclists look massively thick because they fill their whole entire abdomen with air. And know that the deeper you fill your lungs, the more oxygen you're actually getting to your legs. The more shallow you breathe, the more you get to your brain, which is sometimes, well, mostly important, but the less uh, oxygen you're gonna get to your legs, which is why when we get to max effort, we start to have to slow down because our brain becomes prioritized over our legs. Anyhow, that's a story for another day. Today, I'm gonna show you a very basic, very basic tutorial on how to tune in to belly breathing versus neck breathing, and then we're gonna go out to the gym and we're gonna talk about it in the context of running. Now, don't forget about your transverse abdominis and your pelvic floor. When I hurt my back 20 years ago and was learning how to run again after a disc injury, major disc injury, I had to learn how to stabilize with my transverse abdominis. Now this is this low two, three, maybe four out of 10 tension. It's right around my belt line. My pelvic floor, I had to relearn how to integrate those things into my running. If I contract too hard and I bring in my six pack and my obliques, suddenly I'm limited in how deep I can breathe. So this is not like doing a heavy lift where you're doing a breath hold and creating maximum tension. This is relatively low, but consistent abdominal tension around your corset, but still allows you to breathe down into your belly. Like a lot of the things I've been talking about this week, this takes a ton of practice, so be patient with yourself, and on your next workout, just start to tune into it here and there, and see how it goes. Okay, you guys, super basic breathing pattern. One hand's gonna go over your scalenes. These are the muscles up in your neck that actually help lift those upper two ribs when you're breathing shallow. Sort of just gently cup around your neck. The other hand's gonna go over your belly. Lying in a nice comfortable position with your head flat, you're gonna take a few deep breaths and check in with what's happening. If you're feeling tension under your hand, it means you're breathing shallow and at rest that really shouldn't be happening. The goal is to breathe past your scalenes and breathe down into your belly. If you're doing it right, as your diaphragm expands down, your belly should lift and you should actually get thicker. So it's gonna look like this. All I feel is relaxation underneath my hand uh, that's monitoring my neck. Sometimes it's helpful to have some feedback over your belly and a little bit of weight gives your diaphragm something to push against, which is helpful to help activate a muscle that may be underworking. So I'll try to get with the weight. When you're seeing my belly lift, but I'm feeling relaxation, 
underneath my hands. So that's the starting point. Now we need to learn to take that breathing pattern out into the gym on the treadmill. See you there. So part of the partial nudity, but I wanted to make sure that you could see uh, <laughs> my breathing a little bit. And as I start to run here, I'm gonna check in with a few things. Um, the first thing I'm gonna check is my transverse abdominis. I'm sort of reaching inside my pelvic bones to make sure that I have a little bit of that two to four out of 10 tension in my abs. I reach up to my neck now that I know what, to, what I'm feeling for, make sure there's relaxation there. I'm gonna put my hand over my belly, make sure that I'm breathing down into my belly, although there's a little bit of abdominal tension down around my waistband, so there's not a huge increase in um, distension in my belly. But there is relaxation in my neck. As I start to speed up, I'm just gonna simulate what happens when people start to run faster and they start to shrug their shoulders, their chin sticks out a little bit, they look like they're struggling, my breathing rate went up almost double, and I'm really suffering there. Now I'm gonna relax. I'm running the exact same pace, but look how different it looks. Look how more relaxed, look how much more relaxed I am. Look how much more efficient I am. Checking in with my abs, make sure they're stabilizing me at a low level. They're not preventing me from moving, they're not holding me rigid, but they're keeping me stable. Much more efficient, much more relaxed. Thank you. <laughs> Just thanking Camille there, who happened to be training and adjusted the camera angle for me. Just wanted to get a close up of how relaxed my neck is and my slow breathing pattern as I'm ticking along here. I'm gonna to start to tense up and you're gonna see my neck get stiff. You're gonna see my chin come out. I look like I'm working really hard. I'm very inefficient. My breathing rate almost doubles. And then I'm gonna relax again and you're gonna see my neck relax. I'm running the exact same pace, but I'm much more efficient. I look much more relaxed and I'm breathing with my diaphragm at this point. So while identifying an improper breathing pattern is sometimes difficult day to day, running is a great time to check in with your deep abs, to check in with your neck to make sure it's relaxed, and to assure that you're breathing with your diaphragm. It's gonna make you a much more efficient runner. Thanks for watching Stability Wad today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.